hello, hey, Hi, how's everybody doing? All right, I know y'all hungry, so I'm gonna run through this as good as I possibly could. Uh, okay, I'd like to reintroduce myself again. My name is Travis Miller. Uh, I am a web designer, web developer, front end, back end. Uh, I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. I started a few things. I'm a co-founder of, uh, before I even started Island, of a creative community that is about a year and a half home, uh, old back home called Shift the Culture, because um, we really didn't have a creative community like that back home. And through projects through Shift the Culture, we ended up starting uh, Starter Island, which is like a five-day uh, startup competition where we hop on a boat and we go between Nassau and Exuma uh, building a company in five days, and by the time they get back, they have to pitch it to an a audience of investors. And uh, we recently, really recently just opened up a small co-working space called Theory Exchange, which I'm doing with a few of my friends. Uh, but before all that craziness happened, I had a background in advertising and branding, and I want to talk a little bit more about that today. So just before we jump completely in, uh, this talk, I just want to set a few expectations, I guess. This talk is mainly geared towards developers who want to dive deeper into branding. I know personally for me, uh, before I was, when I just started development, I was just all code. And then I really started to get interested in branding um, through working in advertising and, and a branding agency. And I, I kind of fell in love with that, which you'll hear a little bit more later. Um, I'm not going to talk about any new library or framework or any particular way to do anything. So it's just my personal experience and, um, and also working with SaaS. And then it just provides more reasons to use SaaS if you haven't started it yet. Okay, so branding. Um, there's a lot of different interpretations about branding, what people have. You know, I talk about like, what is a brand. People think it's topography, logo, messaging, just the website, color. Uh, but it's way more than that. It's kind of like the things that you don't see or you don't really interact with on the day to day um, knowingly. Um, the best quote that I found out there from somebody who explained branding was from Seth Godin. It says, Brand is set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships taken together account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. So it's a collection of different things that create a brand that uh, people experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, with that being said, I, this is, I, working with the advertising agency that I worked with, I kind of fell in love with branding even before I knew what branding was. Uh, I think even from a young age, I was always interested and different design concepts, uh, you know, how logos and how type looked, uh, different colors and how they play together. And I think my experience working with a, a agency really enhanced that a lot. So I worked, so about that agency, I worked with an agency in Tampa, Florida called Spark. I was there for about two going on to three, uh, two and a half years. And uh, I was there as a web developer, uh, only a web developer. Uh, but through time, I started peeking my head into different branding meetings or proposals or strategy pitches, and I started to learn a little bit more about what this crazy thing called brand was, because I didn't really understand that people said brand, 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 but I didn't see like any interface or any designs or anything like that. It was really more uh, like inherent, like they were talking about it from a strategic perspective, and I really wanted to learn more about it. So working there, I really got to experience and work on a lot of creative projects that really focused more on brand. It wasn't just throwing out a website or throwing out a design. Um, these are just three other good projects that I worked on. One was for his company called AVISPL, uh, which is a big tech company in the Tampa region. They work with like Cisco, Biamp, a lot of other tech products. Um, big brands for the whole state of Florida, um, like Sarah Little Sunshine, where they worked on different campaigns like Bragging Season, where we had to create a whole different brand and an experience online. Uh, but basically what bragging season is, is that everywhere, everywhere else in Florida around winter gets cold, except Florida. So it's kind of like bragging to all the other states that we're the warmest uh, season. And it's kind of this whole brand aspect worked around uh, creating a campaign that we created all different assets for that we shared and it got a lot of attention for the state of Florida. And uh, All Children's Hospital, which is a hospital in St. Petersburg that was really uh, heavy on the different departments that they had and they wanted to brand all their particular uh, departments. So with that all being said, I kind of learned through experience that the, there are a few good brand characteristics, like what makes a good brand. The first and foremost, and I think the most important thing is that it's consistent. Uh, a brand has to 
be consistent across all the different touch points that you create for it in order for people to, to, to resonate with that brand. It has to be reliable. It has to be flexible. It has to be able to come in different formats and mediums. Uh, it has to be recognizable. You have to be able to see from a distance or see a part of it and understand what that brand is. And dare I say, it's supposed to be timeless. Uh, obviously, you know about the Coca-Colas or any other brand like that that's been around for a long time that you recognize off the, the bus. And timeless is kind of like a, a dirty word in web development because it's, you know, it's, technology changes so much. But I do believe if you do it right, um, you could probably make something last very longer than you uh, initially expected. And then obviously, looking into it a little bit more, I really uh, fell in love with uh, the work Massimo Vignelli did. He, was, he worked in branding, but he also designed uh, the New York Transit signs um, that is still used today. And he created a whole system that he developed through the branding. So branding and, well, that's loud. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> so branding in the web. Uh, I have a few crushes on websites out there. Uh, they're not the most technical sites. They don't really do too much parallax. But what I do like about these sites is that they, they stay true to their brand. Even from, uh, they, these are companies and brands that have multiple redesigns, but you could always recognize what these brands are. One of them being Huge, which is the agency, uh, one of the uh, most popular agencies out there. You could go to their site right now and you could just experience what their brand is about, the, the typeface that they use, the colors that they use, that you can't really see really too good right now, but you could recognize what that brand is from uh, always interacting with the site. And it's just the little things that you would notice that if you scroll down the page, the, the logo color would change and the menu items would change. They're just nice different touches to what the brand does on the web. And then another site I like is The Verge. Really not too fancy, but they kind of have their own uh, visual reference to what they do, especially when it comes to stuff like their, uh, their news tiles and their quotes. Um, you, you could even cover up the whole menu and you could recognize what quote uh, that site is from if you go to the site long enough for The Verge. And then there's just a bunch of a million sites out there with a lot of different elements to them that could kind of be tied specifically to a brand. Um, you have a lot of different elements like forms, drop downs. Uh, so how do you tame, how do you connect these elements to the brand? Like how do you tie what makes a brand unique to the common elements that we see day in and day out on user interfaces? That's where SaaS comes in with the branding. So, so there's a, a few advantages of using SaaS and thinking about branding at the same time. So I think SaaS is a great tool for branding on the web. Um, it allows you to think of branding more modularly if you do it right. Um, and it has a ton of tools and techniques for achieving brand use cases that we'll talk about a little bit too. And it just it makes life easier in the long run. I, you've been to a million conferences and talks again on why you should use SaaS. I'm just going to sell it a different way, but it's probably still the same message going forward. So I just want to talk about some core SaaS elements that kind of get used a lot that really tie to what you would be using to brand different elements on the web. So you have your variables, obviously. Mapping, which is, I guess, relatively new. Like, I think it's a year or so old. Um, you have your mix in and extends. And then you have your custom functions if you get super fancy and you want to design something for the, for the main programmers out there. Um, and I just want to back up a little bit and talk a little bit about the traditional branding process, especially if you come from a traditional agency. You get something where you know, the, there's a team or there's a unit of people that work on the branding. And then once the branding is in a nice polished place, it gets uh, kicked to the development team, which is, you know, isn't too bad. It's how we've been doing things for a while. But, uh, you know, your brand elements will be created first, which means you have to wait for these things in most cases for the majority if you don't work too close to the design team. And the developers just take it and implement it in design. I'm thinking, however, what could be done is there's a possibility that the branding could happen hand in hand with the development. Um, which, is a, which is a useful case, especially for um, digital brands like startups that really don't have a, a dedicated development department, but it allows them to think about branding and, and, and how they are represented online as they go um, through the development of the company in, in general. So one, one book that I did read a while back that, that will help a lot uh, to talk about what I'm doing going forward 
is called United We Brand. It's a pretty old book. I think it came out in 2003. And it's a small book. If you can really get your hand on it, it'll be a very useful tool to have. Um, but what it basically talks about is how you break down a brand and how you create a, a brand from scratch. And it just asks you like a few questions. It has a few chapters and then it has a, a few checklists at the end of each chapter to kind of test what you know about building a brand. And this kind of helped me, especially when I was learning about design and development hand in hand um, and how to create brands, for the, especially for the web. Um, but the three core things that I took from this that I use in the web design and development process is um, core values that you create, characteristics that you create, and then your overall message, which is really more on the content side. I really won't talk too much about that today, at least. Um, but I really want to focus on your core values. So initially, when you're thinking about, okay, especially if you're a developer or, or someone who's technical, and you're, you have a startup or an idea or something, that, a project that you want to work on, and you want to craft a brand around it, the first thing that you go to is your core values. Like, what, what, what is the purpose and what are the values of what you're creating? And in this book, it, the United We Brand, they actually kind of give you a jump start and give you some examples to start working with. And this is where we kind of go into the process. That you don't really have to pay too close attention to the exact words that were chosen but it is um, helpful to demonstrate what it's gonna do. So they, it could be any word that you think of, you could even pick your own, but these are kinda the starting points of what the common core values of a brand would be. Uh, so eventually over time, they ideally want you to narrow it down to three or five choices, so you slowly start to pick it down. Okay, this could be what it's about, and then you probably settle on to three to five. I pick four in this example. All right, so, from this perspective of the brand, outside of uh, explaining what your different core values stand for, I start to kind of bleed it in into the, the development process, right? So if I pick, let's say I'm branding a bank or, or a web application for a bank, um, and then you have different aspects and elements that you want to talk about. So if, we, if I pick trust, comfort, education, accountability, right? And I think about, okay, what colors would be associated with these brands, right? Cool. And if I had to think about topography, am I going to go with a serif or a sans serif? Boom. If, if I'm talking about a layout, is it going to be a clear and spacious layout? Is it going to be co compact? What elements are going to be overlays? All those different things I start to think about from a development perspective of branding. And then I start to dig a little bit deeper and I think about what these core values and how, what these core values are and how they would tie to different web elements. So if I'm talking about a button, uh, what does that mean? What was the first initial thought that comes into my head? And this will be different for, for everybody. Uh, for example, for buttons, I think about solid color. If I'm thinking about comfort, you know, I'm thinking about an interaction that, that, that's hovering to light, education, uh, a specific button tied to education or it's something that highlights for accountability. And it goes on and on. It could go as far as you could go. And even with interactions, which is another level that you could kind of think about what you want to design for. If you're thinking about trust, you want something subtle, but if you're thinking about comfort, you're thinking about something that eases in in terms of an interaction when it comes to page load, and it could go on and on. So thinking about putting it together and finally bringing SaaS back in the mix. So obviously, you know our first thing that we do in SaaS is not uncommon, is using your variables. Um, two variables that you could kind of, two section of variables that you could use is colors and topography, and you already set your variables for those different things. So. Um, if you talked about uh, what we use for association of the different colors, we have blue, green, red for the different brands that we use, and the, those are the colors that are correlate with it. And then topography, I think we landed on a uh, serif for the primary type and a sans serif for the, for the secondary type, which is fine, and you could just roll with that. And then from there, you begin to define elements, and you define those elements using SAS. This is nothing fancy at all. It's just tying your variables to your different elements. But now, you're beginning to think about how those elements are playing with the, with the brand or what you chose for those different elements. And throughout this process, you're going to be going back and forth between the profile that you're building with the words that you chose with the actual uh, SAS designs that you're doing. Um, and just, there, there and I, I don't, pretend to recreate the wheel or anything like that because there are a ton of resources out there that really touch on a lot of these different aspects. Like one, for example, I, the color's a little off, but they have this, there's this uh, author, 
named Kyle Fielder, who talks about controlling color with SAS functions. So he's talking about lighting and darkening the SAS. He has a great blog, a blog post. And there's also another one on topography by, I don't think I see a name here, but it's, oh, it's on the sasway.com that talks about how to set variables and how to set uh, baselines for topography. And if you really want to get specific, let's say if you're a brand that uses a custom typeface that you can't get on Typecast or Google Fonts and you want to install your own, SAS has functions that allow you to implement those fonts more uh, specifically than you would normally do. And then with SAS, which is the beautiful thing, you could get very specific um, depending on what your brand use case are. So let's, this is taking into account, for example, that you're really particular in a specific brand that only wants a certain typeface for headings one to three, and you want a different typeface for headings four to six. Well, with SAS, uh, SAS uh, and using mix-ins and using loops, you could use a custom mix-in called headings, for example, and you could tie different mix-ins and functions to say, okay, I want this font family for headings one to three, or, and then I want this color or this different typeface between four to six. And this stuff is, you could do in regular CSS, but it would take a whole lot of time and a whole lot more headache in order to implement it. But with this, you stay thinking about, okay, what's the use case for my brand? What do I want represented with my brand elements? And then you could implement it easily with SAS. And then this is just, uh, if we have time, I don't think we have too much time, but uh, the different tools that you could use, like SASMeister that implements those different things. And after this talk, I'll try to publish this online and share it with everybody so they could get the different links. And then another example would be uh, theming. So say, for example, that uh, just like we talked about a few slides back, uh, we, had, we, we now have different notification types for what we want to represent with the brand if you really get specific. So I think accountability was one of the terms that we used to define our brand. So that'll probably have a color that somewhat coordinates to warning or error, or even a status update if it's subtle. This particular theming mix-in allows you to set different CSS properties based on the, uh, uh, the different uh, notification types that you want. So I think if you, if you go through this one, you set up a mix-in that has for each label that you have in the properties, uh, you could create a class that ties to the name of the notification type. And then depending on the property that you choose, you could set like uh, the different text color or the background color for that particular class. So this may be a little bit more complicated than it sees on the screen, especially that I, I think I have it colored a little bit, but it's not really too much. But with SAS, having these use cases and having these uh, scenarios is a lot more easier than you would initially do um, doing it by manual CSS. And I think it really helps to keep you in context of what the brand needs to do or what the brand needs to communicate. And again, you could, uh, I have a link that goes to the SAS Meister that tests this that, that I will share later. And then I, I couldn't really even do justice to recreate this myself, but I don't know if everybody who's familiar with SAS knows Jackie Balzer, uh, but she uh, was working on a, a weather app, and this particular uh, code pen allows you to change the color of the different uh, temperature of the weather depending on the, the amount of the temperature that you put into it. So like say if it's 32 degrees, it would be a light blue but if it's up in the 92 and the 100s, it start to turn orange to red. All these different things that tie closely to what the brand is, which is the weather app, and then it communicates uh, it efficiently using SAS that you wouldn't normally do through regular CSS. And then there's also ways you could extend the brand as well, which is not uncommon for most um, brands that you work with. So a brand extension for people who want to know is the, is the marketing strategy in which a firm um, marketing a product will well develop images, use the same brand name in a different product or category. So it's just meaning that if you have one particular brand um, and then you want to do something different, like a different use case would be a site redesign or a microsite that, that kind of goes away from the regular main site or additional functionality like a widget or custom pages that needs to go with the brand. SAS allows you to do this way more easier with the functions that you get, like extends or mix-ins. And this keeps it consistent because every touch point you want to you create, you want to keep uh, with
within the same brand realm, realm in order to increase the brand equity. So as you create more and more different products, um, people will still recognize the brand as stays consistent and then you still um, uh, remain efficient in your code that you build using SaaS. And this is just example again with the agency they worked with before. You had, this is a redesign of their current website. Um, uh, this is a previous design of their current website. Now we did something for November that we wanted to do on Microsite 4 and we had like a party that we wanted to, to rebrand as well. So certain elements that we kept in terms of the, the color red, uh, the typeface, we all had in a unified branding style sheet created by SAS, and we just used that same style sheet through multiple different touch points. So what essentially working with SAS uh, is a, essentially a re-engineering of branding. Um, but so to, in order to implement it, you think in SAS, you allow, it allows yourself to make new tools and settings for branding on the web, and and if you need any inspiration, let's say if you don't work with a brand right now or, or a technology that allows you to do different things, you could simply re-engineer it by looking at existing brand guidelines and kind of playing in a sandbox to see how you would develop that in SaaS. And as you build your different uh, guidelines hand in hand with the, with the branding, always refer back to the brand profile that you built to make sure everything stays accurate and consistent. And as you go on, you could create your own libraries and partials, especially using Smacks uh, or continue to add on, develop your lifestyle tiles that you currently use. And just to wrap it up, I'll just do again by a quote from Massimo Vignelli, um, saying that if you do it right, it will last forever. So just keep it, in a, uh, keep it in the frame that thinking about how you would extend and how you would increase the longevity of the brands that you work for and the, the products that you build, think about the best way to build those things now. And SaaS is definitely one of the good ways that you keep brand consistency. And that is it. Thank you.